what does it really mean to be wealthy AF? Is it just about the money in your bank account or is there more to it? This is Wealthy AF, your ultimate guide to understand what it truly means to be Wealthy AF. And today's guest is Isabel Guarino. Isabel is a COO of Impact Housing Group. She trains and coaches entrepreneurs and investors at the Residential Assisted Living Academy with a background in business, marketing, and communication from interning at Walt Disney World to working at two Fortune 500 companies. She is a true leader in business development and operations. She is a sought after coach and trainer for all things RAL. I needed to know what RAL was. That's what is it? Assisted Rent. Oh, assisted living. Yep. Rental assisted living. Isabel's mission is to positively impact 10 million people through residential assisted living and carry on her father's legacy by training investors and entrepreneurs on how to do good and do well. Isabel, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's my pleasure to have you. I'm excited to have you. Thank me. I appreciate it. So tell us, first of all, this journey. I know in your intro, we talk about your dad doing your dad's legacy. You worked at some Fortune 500 companies. Tell us that story. How did you, are you taking, you've taken over your dad's company. Tell us that story. Start yes. Yes. We got started in this industry because my grandmother needed care. She fell and broke her hip and she needed assisted living. And my dad had been a real estate investor for 30 years up until this point. And so when we were looking for a place that was suitable for her, everything was like disgusting and expensive and the care was terrible. And he was like, wait, 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 wait. I think we can do this better. Um, so he found an existing RAL, purchased the real estate, purchased the business up and running day one with the intent to move my grandmother in. She passed before we could move her in. That was 14 years ago. We've now added two more. So we have three cash flowing RALs in the portfolio and we've taught thousands of others how to do this. My dad passed in 2021. And so the business of teaching and training people how to do this as well as his three RALs passed down to me. And so I've been continuing the legacy, sharing with other people how to invest in this niche. That is a really, really cool niche. It, it really is. So let's talk. Let's start talking. Let's start basics, right? Because yeah. we have some real estate investors that listen to us. I'm a real estate guy, as I mentioned to you off air. I own a bunch of uh, apartments, but I'm in the residential space, in the multifamily space, not residential, multifamily rental space. And as a matter of fact, I was mentioning to you off air, there is right now a building that we're looking at purchasing. Yeah. And it's a redevelopment and it currently was operating, I think, as a residential assistant. And when mm -hmm. talking it with my property manager, we were looking at, hey, what will we do here? We were, you know, converting. We were looking at it as a conversion to multi. Mm -hmm. But my property manager was like, hey, we can run this as an assistant living. Why not? And I'm like, oh, why not? Well, for starters, I don't know much about it. I don't know how to <laughs> operate it. <laughs> Right. I know I know multifamily. I know that space. I know how to do I know how to do that game. So what is residential living and how do you own the real estate and then the business? Because I can buy the real estate and rent the business out to another operator. You can't do that. Those are two different skills. So how did your father transition from being a real estate investor to now being an assisted living owner, operator and owning the real estate? So within real estate, if you have a multifamily property or a single family investment, you probably have a property manager. You're more than likely not doing both of those roles. It's the same thing with residential assisted living. You're hiring a licensed administrator who's going to run all the day to day within the home. They hire, fire, train, onboard your caregivers who are doing the 24 seven work within the home, right? They're doing the marketing, the touring with the new families, intake of the new residents, dealing with all of the day-to-day. -day. You own and operate the real estate and the business. So you're working on, not in the business. Higher level. Basically, yeah, higher level. That's how you get there, just like you do with real estate. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, it's almost the same thing. The only thing is I need that one key person. You need that one key person to be yeah. your general manager, per se. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about why why invest in this niche. Tell me tell me why is that a niche that you think it's good to invest in? Well, currently the silent generation is who's living in assisted living. And there was only about 40, I think it's 46, 44 million of them. The, the, baby boom, the, the silent 
generation. I never heard of the silent generation. That's before the boomers? Pre-boomers? Before the boomers, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's who's currently in assisted living. But the boomers, they're just approaching needing care and assistance. And that's going to be a 20-year wave of people coming into this industry. We're currently 1.3 million beds short, and there's 76 million baby boomers. So we're almost doubling the amount of people who need care and assistance. And we're 1.3 million beds short, projecting that we're only building 50,000 beds per year. This is a massive crisis, a huge supply and demand issue that our entire country will be facing. And it's not even the country. It's your family, right? Like, Who's going to take care of your loved one if and when they need care? You know, in-home care is incredibly expensive. Most of the large facilities are terrible. This is that perfect in-between if you can't quit your job to go take care of your loved one full-time, which many people can't. And if you're listening to this podcast and you're wealthy AF or trying to become wealthy AF, you're probably not looking to quit your job to go care for your loved one full-time. So having this cash-flowing business and a place for your loved ones if and when they need it is kind of a, a dual solution right there for many people. Wow, what a wonderful niche. You know, there's a there's a podcast I listen to, and I don't know if you're familiar with these guys, the real estate guys. Eh, yeah. Great, really. Russ, great guys. Russ is uh, dating my mom, actually. <laughs> really? really? Yep. Okay, so you so they had um, a, there was a podcast, I heard one of their episodes, and they were talking, it might have been, you guys, I don't remember. It might have been you. They would talk about about uh, real estate, about assisted living, and they would talk about this data. And I was like, "What an amazing niche, and what a tremendous opportunity there is in the marketplace to serve that niche." Right? Yeah. It's similar to what's currently happening in our country with the shortage of housing, right? Mm-hmm. So, so currently we have. And I think that problem you mentioned is going to exacerbate. It's going to just, just, just ten x because currently we have, depending on who you talk to, and I, I, I love to listen to Russ. Those guys are really smart guys. Is he that smart in real life? Because those He's guys, are, those guys are just sharp, man. Every time I listen to those guys, it's like, shit. I feel like I'm smarter just for listening to them. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, man, I just got smarter just for listening to them. But depending on who you're listening to, there's a shortage of housing, there was a shortage of housing, 3.5 to 4 million units, right? Now we just added 6 to 10 million immigrants into our country, Mm -hmm. right? Depending on who you listen to, 6 to 10 million immigrants into our country in the last three years. Now we have building permits down. We don't have a lot of building happening because of the cost of money. Yeah. So, it's the logic, right? The common sense logic is, hey, that number is just going to get worse because those people that came in, it's the same thing that's happening in the housing. So housing shortage is going to just get worse. Housing rents are going to go up. Prices are going to continue because there's going to be more pressure on demand. But it's going to be the same thing there because these people are also going to age and who knows what age these people are and so on and, and so forth. Yeah, it's very, It we do have a housing crisis in our country today And shared housing is going to become more and more popular. And whether that's residential assisted living, whether that's the pad split style, but people can no longer afford to just have a family living in a home. The rents are sky high and many people can't afford that. So they are doing more of a co-living environment. And we're seeing that in senior housing as well. They don't want to be in this big facility type environment, but they can't stay at home. They need that care. They need that assistance. It's that perfect in between right there. So where do you see the best opportunities and the biggest opportunities is about to invest in assisted living? You know, our, like location wise, I always say this, like raise your hand if you're getting older or know someone who is right. Like we're all aging and there's going to be a need for care in every market. But with residential assisted living, we're really looking for more of a suburban area where the average age is 50 to 70 years old. They're making twice the median income and they're typically a homeowner, a college grad. They're more affluent. That's not the senior moving into the home. That's their adult children because many times they're the ones footing the bill for their elderly loved one. So you want to be close to them because they don't want to drive 45 minutes down the road to go visit mom or dad. So demographics is key with RAL. 
Ah, that is powerful. So let me ask you this. So you're basically saying that you want to build them where there's some, there's affluence, basically 50 to 70. I'm thinking about where I live and where I move. Yeah. I haven't seen one there. Right. So I'm like, Oh, I'm just, the, the brain is going right. Like, Hey, maybe I should create one there. Um, with, with people with college degree. Well, let me ask you this, the area where you live, mm-hmm. are there any big box facilities, Brookdale sunrises, atriums? Um, what are those hospitals? Big box. What? It's a large commercial senior housing facility. No, I haven't seen any. Well, that's nearby. I'm new to the area, so I just moved to Florida. So I just moved to Tampa, and I'm in a submarket of Tampa. I'm not right now. I'm not in Tampa right now. I'm in my mountain house in Pennsylvania, my second home here. I don't know the area that well for me to speak intelligently because I've only been there four months. Yeah. Okay. Well, Tampa in general, you definitely have a lot of older people in Florida, no matter where you are, right? Tampa's got a lot of affluence, but they are skewing younger because people are moving there because of the amazing public school system with Tampa in particular. So you are getting a lot of that 30 to 50. We're looking for that 50 to 70. So I'm sure there are certain pockets of Tampa where you will have a higher 50 to 70 affluent, but there's a lot of affluence in Tampa regardless. You guys are a booming market. So definitely. A lot of money going to Tampa. Yeah. What are the most important numbers to look at when considering investing in Ralph? The biggest thing that I always look for is every market has a maximum amount of residents you can have in a home. So it typically ranges between six and 16. For example, the state of Texas says you can have 16 residents in a home, but Dallas says eight, but right outside of Dallas says 12. So I want to go to the maximum amount that I can have. I'm in the Phoenix market. We're allowed to have 10 residents in a home. Anything that's six or less is really not going to be profitable. So I want to be in an area where it's six or more, particularly 10 or more is even better. So if I was in Texas, I'm not going to go to Dallas. I'm going to go right outside of Dallas so I can have that 12 to 16. And that's really a key because each person who's moving into the home The average rate in our country today is $5,350 per resident. So if you have 10 people at, let's call it 5,500, that's 55,000 coming in every single month. Your mortgage is 10K, expenses to run the home 35K, you're cash flowing 10K a month on one home that you're working in maybe five hours a week, visiting every other month. Like you're not there, you're not doing Mm -hmm. the work. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. That's a great business model. So let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about those numbers. When you say a home, just educate me because I, you know, treat me like I'm a novice here because I am. So when you say a home, they allow six people in a home. You know, as, as we're having this conversation, I got a text message a week ago when I got here to, to Pennsylvania from a guy that operates a small assisted living. He got my number. He know he knows in the market, in the Tampa market, and he got um, he's got a house where he's operating an assisted living facility type, but he's bringing in a house. Can you elaborate? Is that what you mean? He has, he was giving me the description. I'm selling the business with whatever, with the real estate. I think he wanted 450. And I'm, I just got, I was like, I just got here. So I, you know, and I don't really understand it too well. Can you explain that to me? Were you saying six people in the home, 16 people? It is a residential home. It's in a single family neighborhood. You've probably driven by a thousand of them. You just didn't know what they were because there's no big sign out front. It's not commercial. It's not a facility like you may know and and be, you know, familiar with. It's a literal residential home. And so these homes typically are larger homes. And that's why we're looking for the more affluent area because we want 300 to 500 square feet per resident. So if you have 10 residents, minimum a 3,000 square foot home, upwards of 5,000. Most of your residents want a private bedroom, private bathroom. So you're not going to easily find a 1010 on the market, but you can convert a 6.5 that's 5,000 square feet to a 1010, Mm. right? So buying that home, converting it to become appropriate for assisted living. You're still having the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, maybe even a library, a movie theater, a hair salon. These are nice homes in upscale parts of town, but they are single family residential homes. They're zoned residential. And the seniors living in there, they're receiving 24-7 care. There's caregivers who are doing shift work. 
taking shifts to cover 24 hours a day, their medication management, their three meals a day, helping them with bathing, toileting, getting out of bed, doing activities, all the different things that they need to do to live life. What are the biggest challenges? Let's talk about let's talk about the challenges. What are the biggest challenges and rewards with working in the senior population? You know, some everyone thinks the biggest challenge is going to be liability. And it's something we should touch on because I think people are really afraid of like, what if someone dies in the home? You don't go into assisted living for fun. Like you're going in because you can no longer live alone. Like this is end of life care. The average stay is three and a half years, but most people, about 90% will pass in the home. This is not rare. This is very normal. This is the industry that we're in. So it's not a shock to the family when a senior moves in and then they pass a couple years later. Like this is this is life, right? People are going to pass. But you want to do everything to protect yourself as a business owner because there shouldn't be any malpractice, any abuse, any things like that. In a large facility, the ratio is typically 30 seniors to one caregiver. In our care homes, we recommend a four to one or five to one ratio. Wow. The quality of care is already so much greater. The neglect, the abuse, the being left alone for hours on end because there's just not enough staff, that's not happening in our homes because they can actually have their eyes on the residents at all time. They can help them when they need it right away. It's not like a, sorry, there's 10 people in front of you. I'll be there in three hours. That's what's happening in the big facilities. Mm -hmm. It's sad. It's wrong. They should be illegal and shut down, right? Like people in this country do not care about seniors the way we care about children or other people. It's sick. And that's why I love this. And that's also on the other turn, what's so rewarding about this, because I know that what we're doing is the best options for seniors. And if nobody cares about seniors, guess what? They care about themselves. You're going to care about yourself when you're getting that shitty care when you're older and you're going to be pissed about it. And now it's too late. So I care now because I want to help my family, my community, everyone else that I can to show them there's a better option. And if you create one for yourself, now you have a solution. You can cash flow in the meantime. Your loved ones can go there when they need it. And you don't have to leave your kids a burden. You get to leave them a blessing. And that's really cool. That is very, very cool. Very, very cool. What do you see, if any, you, you're you a young person. So technology is impacting many different areas of the real estate investing business, right? With AI. What impact do you see in the future that technology will have in the assisted living business? There is so many incredible new things that are coming into the market, and I love to see them. There's um, amazing activities companies like Tover Toffel, which is basically this overhead projector that plays thousands of games that the seniors can play. They can do puzzles. They can do whack-a-mole. They can do all sorts of really fun stuff. A lot of our homes have the VR goggles, so the seniors can go back to childhood homes or go on a hike in the Himalayas. It's amazing. And then all the way down to EMAR systems. Most of these homes were run mom and pop style. So people were doing their books by hand, their medication forms by hand. Guess what? If you're tired and you forgot to write that Julie took her two pills at 11 p.m. or whatever, things get messed up quick. Now everything is turning electronic. They're turning more techified. And I love that. Systems that are distributing pills and counting and, and marking it all for you. All the way down to wearable tech. Seniors are doing like, it's kind of like an Apple watch, a Fitbit or whatever, and they can literally wear it. It geo tracks where they are in the home. When you press the, you know, fall and I can't get up or whatever button, the caregivers can find where they are in the home without them having to know because it's tracking them at all time. And it tracks how long it takes a caregiver to get to the senior. It's tracking their UTIs. It's tracking if if they fell, if it falls quick, it alerts right away, right? All sorts of amazing thing. We can basically predict when someone's on their way out based on all the information right there. Incredible tech tools are coming to market, and I only think it's going to help improve our industry at large. That is amazing. That is really, really cool how you guys are using that. Wow, that is, I'm, my mind is blown by, by that. 
You know, I remember that commercial. You said uh, I fall and I can't get up commercial. I don't know if, you, if you're old enough to remember yeah. that commercial, the little button thing and the, the lady in the stairs. But man, that is really, really awesome stuff. As it pertains to investors, let's say that we have an investor listening right now. Are you yeah. guys doing syndications? Are you guys raising capital to buy new assets? How do you get, let's just say, maybe we have a passive investor listening right now and they're saying, hey man, this sounds cool. Sounds like a really good niche and um, it'd be something I'd be willing to invest in. Is that something you guys are doing? Are you guys syndicating right now? So what we do at the Residential Assisted Living Academy is we train people how to do this. For the last 10 years, we've been the nation's number one education company on this industry. We've trained thousands of people how to own and operate these homes as well as invest in these homes. So because we're having these trainings, we're getting hundreds of new owner operators in and guess what they need funding right. so if you right if you are an accredited investor and you're listening and you're saying i don't want to own the real estate i don't want to operate the business but i want to invest in someone who's going to do this we have a private lenders list and we grow that list with all the different events and and podcasts and things like this that i do we get people who reach out and say i want you know to be on that list i want to be in touch with your students who are going to do this the right way you know, who are going to have great deals, who are who are highly educated in this. And that's really cool right there. So they can if, if you're listening and that's you and you want to, you know, be on that list and be a part of it, you can definitely reach out to us because we're always looking for amazing investors who want to work with our top tier students. Yeah, which was my which was my my, my final question is is about if people wanted to. So if we have some 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 maybe operators that want to learn how to operate and yeah and sign up for your course, how do they find you? Or if we have that investor that's saying, hey, you know, I'm good at what I do, so I'm going to definitely talk to you. I'm I'm good at mine. I don't want to just start spreading myself thin. I prefer to invest in passively. I was just talking to someone. So interesting, interesting story that you mentioned that. I was just talking to a, a buddy of mine and um, he owns, his niche is, this was maybe an hour ago, his niche is um, college, student, student housing. Yeah. Student housing. He owns a bunch. He's buying, he's closing on an 18, 18 unit apartment building today. As a matter of fact, he was going to the closing today and he was turning it into 56 beds or something. You know, he speaks that like that he was turning it. It's 18 units and he's turning it to 56 beds, whatever that means. I know that's how they calculate it. That's their equivalent of our doors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the multifamily. So, um, and we were ta just talking about that. He was like, man, you know, the older I get in this business and the more seasoned I get, I realize that, that the people with the best roles in our business is not the operators, but it's the investors. I want to, I just want to be an investor or he was like, so when you have your deal, your next deal, call me. Cause I'll just deploy some of my capital into your deal. Cause we know yeah. work that goes along with it. Right. Some people yeah. need skills. They want to, they want to scale up. And some people just, Hey man, I have the money. Just give me returns on my money. So. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there's uh, the 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 rules in in the rules I learned. What my mentor told me was wholesalers is at the bottom, flippers are next, then buy and hold is next, and then at the top of the pyramid is the lender. He who has the money makes the rules. From the uh, the the old adage from the richest man in Babylon. So yeah. uh, I'm one that would like to deploy some capital and, and talk to you about that or privately. So if people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they connect with you? Where do they find you? Isabel, how do they how do they sign up with you guys? Yeah, we've got uh, free webinars, free books, or you can schedule a call with me or the team at ral101.com, or you can follow us on social media at ral academy. Thank you so much for coming on, Isabel. This was great. Learned a ton from you, and I'm sure the listeners got a lot of value from our conversation. Thanks for having me.